What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm our online campus director. I'm so glad that you're here. If you don't normally join us, uh, the lobby is just kind of our hangout time before the service gets started. And today with me on the lobby is my friend and coworker, Pastor Kylie. Hello, Pastor Kylie. Hello. Pastor Hello. Kylie is our Williston campus pastor. And hopefully you joined us last week. She preached last week. Can we get, do we have raucous applause? <laughs> there we go. Ooh, double producer on raucous applause. Uh, she did a great job preaching last week mm -hmm. and on the podcast podcast was fun. You had been on the podcast before, fun. but not with yeah. me. No. So no, this no. was your first time having yes. to have me there. So I apologize. <laughs> it was but fun. It was really, it was but a we're really both great history podcast. Buffs. It was. So yeah. that we makes We got to have really some nerdy fun. conversations. Yes. It yes. was really good. Not time. that Mike isn't, but. But still. Not on our level. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, have, we also have double producers that you probably already Hello. saw. I hope we cut to them during the raucous applause part of the... <laughs> yeah, Yay. that part. Yeah, that part. Yeah. Yeah. And then you also have Olivia in the room. Um, <laughs> <can't see> <laughs> Olivia's waving. <laughs> Olivia's favorite activity is when Michael is not on camera, but he waves <laughs> when we say that he's in the room. Right. So we always um, have, to, yeah, we always have yeah. to hit that part. There you go. But, so not only did you preach last week, you did the mm -hmm. podcast, you're the Wilson Campus Pastor, but... Maybe most importantly, you made the hot dish today for I Hot did. Dish Month. Wow. I did. Yeah. I did. Although we call them casseroles. Well, that's, <gasps> Pastor yeah, Kylie. We're going to need you to, we're gonna need you to apologize as a producer, for what you just said. As a producer, let's cut and we'll back it up a little bit. <laughs> what do you make, Pastor, <clears throat> Pastor Kylie? You call them what? A casserole. No. we, we got to try again. Right. <laughs> One last time. What do you call them, oh, wait, Pastor cut? Kylie? Okay, it's Hot Dish there Month. There we go. Yay. <laughs> Uh, not a uh, Midwesterner. Well, I guess I am, Nebraska I am. is Midwesternish. It's south. It's not that far. Well, it must be a northern Midwestern. Maybe it's one of those little niche areas that. <laughs> Well, she was, they she was in a commune. Yeah. They, they actually believed <laughs> everything wrong. normal other than we did not call this hot dish. <laughs> <laughs> this is casserole or you get out. <laughs> I mean, we're still in the chili cinnamon roll zone of the country. Oh, so it's one of those chili yeah. as in cold or chili as in the food? Chili as in the soup. And then you have cinnamon rolls with it, which is I've also heard of it. North, you put it isn't it on, in North Dakota? You put thing? it on. I don't think it's not so. a cinnamon roll. It's thing. Not that sounds terrible. Thing. You eat the chili, but you also have. In Ohio, rolls. they put chili on spaghetti noodles, which is a weird oh. move. I've heard of the pretty, chili it's, it's and the cinnamon good. roll in Montana, just in Sydney. Oh. It's a thing even there, but not oh. not North pa Dakota. Not Pastor Russ not and Jen, if you're joining us, let us know if you've tried chili on top of spaghetti. Well, yet. Oh yeah, yeah, It's a big it's a big deal over there. Now chili on top of. Uh, More chili. Delicious. <laughs> no, the corn chips. Fritos. Fritos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Is, is yeah, fantastic. That's the go-to. Fritos. I'm a big that's Dorito. Fantastic. I'd rather do Doritos. Doritos with chili? Oh, oh yes. Have you oh. guys not tried Which that? Which flavor no. of Doritos? Oh, just classic. Move. classic. You know, just like classic. Nacho cheese. cheese. Yes. Yeah, so what, but, why, but why? They that's just what, flavor. That's just what we did. Was you just dipped like a tortilla chip in chili. Oh. I am. It's a game changer. You guys got to try it. I'm not going to do that. I'll try it. If we, when, to when, do it on the lobby. when we have chili month, <laughs> yeah. we will try dipping Doritos yeah. in chili. Do you guys like chili? There is yeah. a lot of and different Doritos. chilies. I yeah. like both of those things, yes. Together. Do you like both of those things? Chili and... Chili and Doritos? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Could I branch out? I like, I like the spicy nacho Doritos. Would I be allowed to use absolutely. the spicy nacho? Absolutely, yes. Okay. The ranch ones, no. Oh, uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, ranch is not good. I don't like I, ranch, but I do like yeah. cooler ranch Doritos. Oh, I'm too. still stuck on doing a chili month. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of different chilies you can the, make. The we, problem is we keep talking about how Hot Dish Month is just never going to end. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be yeah. 2027, and we're like, that's Hot Dish Month, everybody. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah, brought yeah. the hot dish? Today? I feel like it can morph. Yeah. It can morph into yeah. chili. I actually have a white chicken chili recipe. I would too. eat that. Yeah. All right, so yeah. Kylie's the Pastor first. Kylie is going to kick off Chili Month when we get to that. Yes. With white chicken chili. Yep, and then, yeah, and then really Hattie good. will come back and force us to dip Doritos in chili. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't and have you a You can chili come back recipe, and feed but... us cinnamon rolls with our chili, which oh, seems, I just don't under, that doesn't seem well, like a good combo. Okay, so I should qualify this. <clears throat> Growing up, we never had cinnamon rolls when we had chili, but I have seen on Facebook, like everybody at home, that's kind of Weird. become the thing. And I could have sworn it was something around here, mm -hmm. but huh. I mean, I'm not from here. But I haven't heard yeah. of it. It definitely isn't a Minnesota thing yeah, no, that I'm no. familiar with. But I've yeah. heard of it for sure, just not yeah. here. Not here. I yeah. haven't even yeah. heard of it. Yeah. Uh, what What's this, the name of the hot dish that you brought? This one we actually called it's Laura's favorite hot casserole. Mm. Hot dish. Wait. Oh, yeah, can that's you what can we you, call it. <laughs> what, what are we calling it here on the Laura's lobby? Laura's favorite hot dish. Laura's yeah. favorite hot dish. Thanks, Laura, for your my hot sister, dish. 
My sister's a rabid traditionalist, though, so she might have a little bit of a fit about that. Well, she's not here. So. <laughs> she, can, she can start a new tradition today. Yes. Yes. If she's joining us right now, she can jump in the chat and let us know her feelings, but otherwise. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she was like the pickiest eater on the planet, mm -hmm. and this was something she actually liked. So when mom sure. didn't want to have those battles, we'd have Laura's favorite casserole. I like it. So, it is Pat shockingly dish. cold in the studio today. Yes. Yes. So I don't know if it's still going to be, because this, right. this was like very hot when you set yeah. it down, and it's cold now. Yeah. So we'll see. The sides are still I hot. hope it tastes okay. Can uh, I just like, as down. a producer, I think we need another role, and it's just an Olivia camera, because the, <laughs> the reaction she's doing over there, <laughs> like when you said we have Olivia in the room, the like joy and excitement <laughs> on her face, and now her like, when you said it's cold in here, she's like, Ugh. <laughs> It's really I, good. I like to think that Olivia in the room is like our representation of all of our New Hope family <laughs> at home. Yeah, that's good. Like we, we might not be able to see them right now, but we know that they're going, mm, it's really cold. It's cold out. Okay. You're in a different room than us. You could probably like turn the heat up or grab a blanket. When you say it's cold, it's a little yeah. different I mean, than I, when Olivia or Hattie I, I like say it's cold. that it's cold, but I, I it's definitely cold it's in this room yeah. right now. Um, it's yes. six, we're at six yeah. minutes. Uh, okay. Olivia, do you want to come uh, help us serve yeah. this <laughs> Laura's the, favorite hot dish? Camera Laura's, could just favorite, hot Laura's favorite hot dish. Yes. Yes. It's Olivia, everybody. Can hey, we get rockets applause yay. again? Yay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Hattie, could oh. you do your rockets applause? I don't think <laughs> Let we're... Me move let's my focus on the hot dish yeah, let's today. Do that. It yeah. looks so good. delicious. It looks like it's an acceptable hot dish. I hope it is. Uh, it has all there's the definitely, hot dish elements. I was going to say, that. that's what yeah. I meant by acceptable. Yeah. It looks tasty either way. Cream but. soup. What kind of cream soup? Uh, both mushroom and chicken. Oh, did mm -hmm. you get it in one can or... Did you do two that? cans? Oh, okay. Did you know that you can get no. in one can cream of chicken and mushroom Seriously? soup? Seriously, that's what we use. Yeah. <gasps> I check not check out that. last week's episode of The Lobby for Hattie's <laughs> oh, Baking Show, where we also discovered that, that. Michael and I were going to film ourselves shopping for that cooking show too, that and I kind of wish great. we would because yeah. the moment <laughs> the moment we realized, oh thank you, the moment we realized you can get cream of chicken and cream of mushroom in the same can, we was... we got way too excited about it. <laughs> Two guys in the grocery store and the cream of chicken. And just, believe it? just our general conversations as we walked around. We, we ran into someone we yeah. know who just was, she just followed us for a little bit watching us. So we were like, we should have filmed it. That's amazing. Filmed you it. Should've. Yeah, this isn't a small amount really of hot dish. Oh my. But I do appreciate the corner piece. As we discussed last week, mm. the crispiest mm -hmm. part of the hot dish is always mm -hmm. the best part of the right. hot dish. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other, well, actually all of the elements of a hot dish, cheese on top mm -hmm. is a must. Mm -hmm. yep. Of course, cream soup. Yep. Some sort of uh, some sort of either pasta or potato mm -hmm. needs to okay. be in sure. Okay. sure. And then a protein. And then sometimes, yeah. a, and then sometimes a, vegetable a vegetable hurled in, which, which corn borderlines on being a vegetable. <laughs> to make it healthy. Yeah. Say, we can pretend it's now healthy corn's a vegetable. Of that. It's not really, but... It yes. smells good. Yes. Once again, I'm an add pepper oh, to hot piece. dishes too, kind of person, and we don't, we still don't have pepper in this room. Oh, <laughs> we but we have, bring pepper in we didn't have salt. We do have two things it. of salt. Yeah, and I didn't, and you're right. That's the thing I missed. It's been a long time since I made this. It's got to have pepper Ooh. on top of it. And oh, I you put it on it. top after. Yeah. So we'll get some pepper in here for next yeah. week. Yeah. There's never yeah. pepper in here. No. Yeah. For some reason, the studio is pepperless. Is I not give this person enough sauce. You're dishing up so much. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> We're going to run out of time Michael. before we try. <laughs> we got Just give them two forks and they can share the same plate. You got about oh, a minute got. and a half. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. All right. I think it's Thank time. Thank you so uh, much. Because Hattie hosts her own cooking show now. I do. She's, <laughs> our, she's our official expert. <gasps> Michael is kind of like the sassy British guy that mm, judges yes. the food. I'm just really here for and Olivia's just here to eat. Yep. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I think I would be the right. nice judge on a cooking show. I think that's most likely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. most likely. Oh in there. All right, here we go. Okay. Everyone's jumping in. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds of mm -hmm. people eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, it's a tasty hot dish. Michael that just works. said, we're all, we're yeah. That yeah that's all Michael needs to. Could you say it in a British accent, though, Michael? Yeah. <laughs> what? what was that? That was like I got, I got nothing. late night radio voice. Uh, before we started, you said Michael would be the cranky British that's right. judge. Oh, so yeah. we need to hear. We need your sassy British yep. judge breakdown of. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> Olivia off camera. Would you like us to pour some tea? <laughs> <laughs> I really That's hope that. Really. Could you hear that in I your headphones? Hear it, That's yeah. tremendous <laughs> news. Yes. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. I'm sad this week. everyone's missing that. We... <laughs> 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 
still going. <laughs> do we need to go to the service? I feel we, like we need to go to the service. We do. Okay. We do. Uh, Pastor Kylie, thank you so much yeah. for making the hot dish and for hanging out with us. Absolutely. Um, everybody say hello to Pastor Kylie in the chat. Uh, <laughs> thank you, double producers. Although it seems like Hattie's doing all the real work and Michael's yeah. just, Michael, here, to I'm just here to eat. He's our Olivia. British judge. Even Olivia d is getting no producer credit and she did way more work than you. So thank you, Olivia. <laughs> Thanks all of you for joining us. Uh, we have such a great such a great service today. Our, our Promised Land series continues. Some great worship. I just knocked hot dish onto my lap. So it's going to be a great day. Uh, we love you and we will see you in just a minute. What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. We are so glad that you joined us today. We have such a great service yeah. today, great worship, a great message from Pastor Mike. Uh, it's week four of Promised Land, our mini series and our big series where we're going all the way through the Bible in 31 weeks. Last week, Pastor Kylie preached so on Ruth. Good. It was awesome. Yeah. This week, Pastor Mike's going to bring us to Saul and, and we're going to learn all about him. So we're just so excited that you're here today. Yes, and last week, for those of you who joined us, we had a great time chatting we with did. all of you. It was well, amazing. I, I didn't chat, but I, just, I, chatted. I watched the And there were so chatting. many of you in there. It was yeah. so great. We and love funny, connecting to hear about your weeks, fun to hear about mm -hmm. your prayer requests, what's going on in your life. So we want to encourage yeah. you to continue in that, to keep chatting. That's how we build community. That's how we build our church family. So find the chat box yes. right now. It's somewhere down here. It's you can not where Hattie's pointing, but you can find it. I believe in it's you. It's somewhere. <laughs> Say hello. Let yes. us know how your week has been. We would love to just to, to hear from you yeah. today. And uh, like we said, we have an awesome service. And the first mm -hmm. thing we have is some great worship. So would you join us for that? God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness. Set is 
Looking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet You never failed Waiting for change to come Knowing the bad still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never fail me yet. no never fail me Still in your hands This is my 
Well, hello again, church. Before we get to Pastor Mike's message, which is going to be so good, yes. I'll, I'll be honest, I've already heard it, and Ooh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. So we're very excited for that. But we have a few things that we just want to touch on before we get there. Yeah. And for those of you that join us regularly, this is the part where you're like, "Oh, I've heard them talk about the Connect card, so I'm gonna." You yes, know, you probably mute could. It, you probably could share everything my, we're about to share. Check with my you. fantasy football team yes. or whatever you like to do on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Go get another donut if you could bring me one. That'd be great. Cup of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all of those things, yeah. but don't check out. Don't do that. Yeah, these are important things, and mm -hmm. the first one is the. Connect card, mm -hmm. and we love when you fill out the Connect yes. card. We talked about it maybe two weeks ago now, but we've been having more Connect cards coming in from New Hope here, and mm -hmm. we're loving that. So um, please continue to fill out those Connect cards. Let us know if you have any questions about the about the yeah. church, any ways you're looking to get connected, stuff like that. And then most importantly, I don't know if it's most important, but it's my favorite. Yeah, there's a spot on there for prayer requests, and mm -hmm. we would just love to know how we could be praying for you. We love you so much, and mm -hmm. we believe in the power of prayer, so we want to know how we could be praying for you. Yes, and for those of you who are joining us this morning, and you've got kiddos watching yes. uh, with you, we have a spe special, that word's always Very a little special. challenging for me, <laughs> special message planned yes. uh, just for your kiddo. So uh, grab a second device, grab an iPad or something, and Pastor Andrea and Anna, uh, they have such a fun time they of do. worship and games it's and amazing. a message uh, just for your kids, preschool on down. <laughs> Almost. Preschool got on up it. through there elementary. Yes. <laughs> Preschool you guys through, got the through details. elementary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Preschool through elementary. It's it's really great. Um, if you've never checked it out with your kids, maybe sit down sometime and do that. And Could I think be a fun family night. I think you'll enjoy Andrea and Anna's <laughs> yeah. craziness. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> I also want to talk to those of you that have been faithfully giving to New mm -hmm. Hope, and we just want to thank you so much for, for that. Um, the only way that we can go, grow, and give and, and fulfill our mission at, at here at New Hope is, is through your faithful giving. So we're so thankful for that. We want to encourage you to, to keep doing that, keep being faithful with what God has given you. And if, if you haven't taken that step of, of faith yet and followed what God t tells us to do in the Bible of giving back to him what he's given to us, uh, there's a link in the, in the chat right now or you can see it on the screen. You can go to newhopehere.com slash give and see all the different ways you can give um, if you want to partner with us in, in fulfilling our mission. Yeah, just a second ago, David was talking about just how much prayer matters to us mm -hmm. and we would love to pray for you. You can put those on your Connect card like you mentioned. Yep. Uh, but also we have people here who are ready to pray with you right now yep. if you are joining with us live. Uh, so click that button uh, in the chat that says prayer, yep. live prayer, live something prayer. like that. Sure. Uh, and we will have people who are just uh, can't wait to hear your prayer request and be mm -hmm. able to pray with you. And maybe if you're joining with us later, we'll take a moment and we'll all pray together now. Uh, Father, we are just so grateful for uh, our church family to, to connect more, to hear more about uh, what's going on in people's lives. And we pray that that would just continue to increase as um, the weeks go on, that you would build our church family, Lord, that you would draw uh, just more people into this place, that um, they can find hope and healing and life and whatever it is that they're needing uh, from you, God. And uh, so we just thank you for this time that we have set apart to worship you and to praise you and uh, to hear a message. Uh, this morning, Lord, and um, it might be difficult to listen for some of us. Maybe we get distracted or uh, maybe our mind wanders, whatever it might be, God, but we do want to be growing in our ability to hear you and to listen to you. And so, God, uh, we pray that you would open up those channels, uh, help clear our minds, whatever it might be, Lord, just teach us to listen to you uh, and then also to be obedient to you, which can be just almost as challenging to take that step of faith of the things that you call us to do, Lord, but we know as followers of you, that's, that's what you desire for us because you have good things for us. So uh, yes, Lord, we just thank you for even right now hearing our prayers, uh, for being present with us no matter where we're at. Uh, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Well, welcome to New Hope here. I'm so glad that you're with us. If you've got your Bible, grab it, or even better, if you picked up one of the storybooks to read along with us. It's the Bible, but uh, they put it together in the order that we're walking through all, these, all of these 31 weeks. And if you're in a gathering, I am ecstatic. I'm thrilled that you've gathered together and are walking through this together. But if you aren't in a gathering, and maybe you're just watching alone, or maybe it's just a few of you, I want to really encourage you, if you've never taken time to open up the chat and to engage with our online team, and I hope you're watching live, please do that. Even if it's just to say, hey, my name is, and you put your name is, your name in there and let us know. We would love to have you do that because there, it's, you know, it's one thing if we just kind of sit and consume the worship experience, and, and that's okay. But we want to help you continue to grow, and you need the body of Christ. So wherever you're joining from, if you're able to, I want to encourage you, dive into the chat, interact a little bit, again, even if it's only one or two things. And we do our best to put some things in there in addition to what you're going to get even in the teaching time, some links and some other things that will help you in your next steps. All right, so that's the challenge for today as we dive in. This weekend, we're at our next stop as we journey through the story. And again, this is part of the bigger series. We've called it The Greatest Story Ever Told. And that means that as we walk through this, we're learning to read God's Word, to read the Bible with three perspectives, right? And I moved to different spots just to help us know where that is. We talk about the upper story as we're reading his story, history. That, and we remind ourselves God's always at work. He's always involved. The lower story, we got to remind ourselves, this is real history, and it's, it may be different because we weren't there, we weren't alive. It's the ancient world, but we need to get a grasp on what was happening and realize these aren't myths, these aren't made-up stories, these are people just like you and me, just in a different time. And of course, we stop at my story, because even though these are stories from thousands of years ago, at least here in the Old Testament, uh, we need to ask the question, why are they here? God has them here, and as he is working in their individual lives, he's also weaving a story to teach us and to help us in our story. And listen, if you've struggled at all understanding the Bible, it may be because you needed to learn these three perspectives, upper story, lower story, my story, and I hope that helps as we dive in. So let's just start by getting our context kind of here in the lower story. We've, we looked at a couple of weeks ago at a book in the Old Testament, the book of Judges. And the book of Judges, uh, was a, it, the, it's a collection of stories about spiritual leaders. And if you weren't with us, judges in that day and age in the ancient world weren't like judges like the Supreme Court or Traffic Court or wherever today. They were spiritual directors, spiritual guides, spiritual kind of governors in a sense that were put in place by God to help God's people learn what it looked like to live under his promises. And when they drifted from it, which we learned they did often and they got stuck in the cycle of sin, that they would help correct them and bring them back. And as we move on with the story from Judges, last week, Pastor Kylie took us through kind of a, a zoomed in story during that time in one person, the book of Ruth, and connected it all the way up to Jesus. And uh, it was, it's an incredible story and it connects with where we're going to be talking in these last three weeks of this kind of mini series that we're calling Promised Land. And this week, this week, we're introduced to the time of Israel after they've been in the Promised Land for many, many years of them becoming more than a family, they're becoming a nation that's led by kings. Now, that wasn't God's preference. That wasn't God's best, as we'll discover. But if you, if you were to look in the Bible, the history of the kings is actually recorded across several books in the Old Testament, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. And actually, originally, these were all intended to be one long book but in that day and age, they were written down in scrolls. And if they put them all together in one long scroll, no one could carry it. It was too heavy. So that's where they started to break them apart into 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, and so on and so forth. 
And in this, this, just like in the book of Judges, there's a whole bunch of mini stories and there's tons of teaching that we could take week after week where we could learn from and threads that we could connect to the history, history, his story that we've already walked through and the history to come. But as we're walking through this, I want to stop and we're going to look kind of at the overarching story and stop and we're going to learn some promised land principles, some promised land truths. And what these are is really truths from these stories that God wants us to know so that we can, in our context, learn how to live under the promises of God. And here's a big promised land principle we're going to start with. And this is a huge one. It's one that's going to connect, as we'll see, all the way through. King after king after king after king. Here it is. I'll put it here on the screen. Promised land principle. Develop a lifestyle of listening for God's voice and do what he says when you hear him. I want to leave that on the screen. And I want us, if you can, read it out loud. Now, you may be on headphones and somebody else around you may be kind of weird. But if you can, if you're in a gathering, read it out loud together because I think it helps kind of cement it in our heads. Ready? Develop a lifestyle of listening for God's voice and do what he says when you hear him. The very first king of Israel is a man by the name of Saul. But before we get to Saul, we've got to talk about Samuel. Samuel was the last of the judges, maybe arguably the greatest of the judges. And Samuel's story is at the beginning of the times of the kings for a reason. Because this thread, this principle of developing a lifestyle of listening for God's voice and doing what he says matters. It will matter to the lives of the kings. It will matter to God's people. And ultimately, it matters to you and to me. So if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, you want to uh, turn to 1 Samuel. If you've got your storybook, you'll turn to page 131. We're in chapter, what is it? Chapter, I'm, I'm starting kind of in the middle of chapter, chapter 9 as we dive in. And at the bottom of page 131, Very bottom part. Here's how it starts. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Now, as you read it this week, you're going to read kind of the the preface to this, how Samuel, as a little boy, ended up as an acolyte in the temple of God. His parents couldn't have kids. His mom prayed for kids, and God finally answered her prayer, gave her a child. And as often happened in the ancient world, when God answered a prayer, especially to have a child, that first child was dedicated to God's service. And so Samuel got to live in the temple and to learn, as we'll discover at a very young age, how to follow God from the high priest. And the high priest's name was Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. And as, you, as we understand that, it meant God's people had forgotten or they neglected developing a lifestyle of hearing God's voice. Because the world, because sin in that day, just like it is in our day, fights against us, creates noise, creates distractions, and creates a pattern of living that makes it hard to hear God. And the pattern to hear God's voice is kind of contrary to the world. Just like, you know, Kylie and I will have been married 28 years, actually this week, the week of Thanksgiving. And even in these 28 years, we're still learning how to listen to one another because so much of just stopping and listening and paying attention to the nuances of body language is just contrary. We just kind of want to rush through life. And same is true in our relationship with God. So in that day and age, the... The word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. And one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, he was getting older and maybe he needed glasses like I do. He was lying down in his usual place and the lamp of God had not yet gone out. Kind of a nightlight in the temple that symbolized God's presence. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. And as far as we know, it was an audible voice, or at least Samuel heard it that. It probably woke him up from the sleep. You've had this, right? You've heard something, it woke you up, and you're like, was that a dream? What was it? And Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli, and he said, here I am. You called me, because he assumed. He heard a voice. It was Eli. Eli said, I didn't call. You can imagine and say, you're just having a dream. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. And again, the Lord said, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. 
And Eli said, my son, I did not call. Go back and lie down. In other words, let me sleep, kid. Parents, if you've got little kids, you understand how this works, right? Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. This is, this is key, and I just need to stop here. He said the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Catch this. Samuel grew up, Samuel was born into a religious family. Samuel was growing up in the temple, and yet he didn't have a relationship with the Lord. This is a real kind of important spot for us to just talk about for a moment because there's a lot of us, maybe many of us who have grown up, maybe you grew up, your parents taking you to church, maybe regularly, maybe Christmas and Easter. Maybe you go to church or watch church regularly. Do you know you can watch and be around church and be around church people and not actually know God? You can know a lot about God and not actually know God. You've got to learn to listen, as we'll discover. Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And a third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, he's teaching him something here. Catch this. Go and lie down. And if he calls you, you say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood there. It's, he was there with Samuel and calling it as, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, and he did what Eli taught him, Speak, Lord, for this, your servant is listening. There's a few things from Samuel that we'll see repeated or ignored as we move through the lives of the kings and year after year, decade after decade, even century after century in God's people, Israel, and even we'll connect it to our own lives. And there's three principles right off the top I want to give us for hearing God speak. And I really want to encourage you to write these down. Even if you never write anything down, write these down. If you're listening, maybe dry, riding in your car or vehicle, go back and listen to this again later. And write these down someplace where you'll be reminded because we're going to come back to these again and again and again. Three principles for hearing God speak. Here's the first one. Recognizing God's voice is something we learn. Notice, Samuel didn't recognize it. And Eli didn't at first either know what was happening until after he was woken up a few times. He finally realized what was happening and finally said, all right, Samuel, this is God. Let me teach you basically how to hear God's voice. See, hearing God's voice, we already touched, about this, just touched on this just briefly, is something we learn because our worldview has been messed up by sin being active in our world and messing up our ability. We have to learn to hear his voice, just like we have to learn how to communicate with people around us. Second principle, learn to go to God first. Little Samuel didn't know any better. When something happened, he didn't understand. What did he do? He went to Eli, right? He ran to Eli. I don't understand what happened. And that's not all that different than you and me. When we face a situation, when we face a decision, when we face a problem, when we face a pain, or we face any moment in life that is kind of uncertain, what do we do? There are certain things that we just go to, right? There are, when you're tired at the end of the day and you just want to unplug, there are certain places you go. When you have to make a decision, there are certain people you go to. And far too often, we go to all these other things. And if, then if we don't have an answer, then we go, oh, I suppose I should go to God. And God's saying, I want to be your first stop. Your first stop. And the truth is, our world is so filled with things and places and people that we run to instead of stopping to hear God's voice first. And some of them aren't bad. You know, wise counselors, godly leaders, good friends who know the Lord. Those are all good things, but those should be part of our decision-making process only after we go to God first because people don't always get it right, right? And some of the things, honestly, that we go to, are specifically designed by the enemy to replace God and to, dis and to distort God's voice. Some things are just blatant idolatry and paganism, like horoscopes and astrology. That's just, some, you may say it's foolish. It is foolish because it's designed to replace God. New Age teachings, false and fake religions. 
So the second principle, go to God first. And if you've chosen to be a follower of Jesus, and I know not all of us joining in are quite at that place yet, but you've made the choice to make Jesus be the leader of your life. Why? Because you've chosen to be a follower. That means you follow him. That means we start by asking him for direction. We start by asking him for help first. We start by going to him for provision, for ideas, for creativity, for peace, for wisdom. All right, third principle. When God, when God gives direction, obey him, even if it's difficult. And I would say, even if it doesn't make sense to you right now. As you read on in Samuel's story, Samuel does what Eli taught him, and he begins to hear God, and God says something to him that's tough. He says something to him about what's going to happen in the coming days, something about what's going to happen to Eli, because Eli, even though he was a high priest, he was anything but perfect, and actually, he was a pretty awful parent. And God spoke truth to him, but like God always does, he spoke truth, but he also gave hope, hope for God's people. But Samuel, you will continue to lead. The next morning, Eli asks him, and you can read it in page 132, the very bottom. He says, what was it he said to you? Don't hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it every so severely, if you hide it from me. Hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. And if you read on, what God had told him was pretty hard. And if I were Samuel, I'll be honest, I would have been tempted to kind of whitewash it, to kind of soften and say, well, God, God told me that he's going to do something new. Well, God told me that, you know, your kids need a little help. Samuel heard from God. And he learned the next lesson. If I'm going to hear from God, I need to obey him, even if it's difficult. So here's the three principles right at the top. You got them? Three principles for hearing God speak. Recognizing God's voice is something we learn. Learn to go to God first. And when God gives direction, obey him even when it's it's difficult. Easy for me to say, right? And that last one is so important because sometimes we want to hear God, but if we don't like it, we go, all right, is there anybody else out there? But if we start asking for God to speak, but then we don't obey him, it's actually going to put a roadblock in, kind of like stopping our ears. We're we're going to stop being able to hear him. And I, I keep saying this, but as we move forward into the stories of the kings, and we'll look at Saul here in just a moment, we're going to go from Saul to David. We're going to see king after king being, being given the opportunity to hear God's voice. And we'll get to see the consequences, some of them good, some of them not so good, of whether they learned how to listen, learned how to obey, or if they listened but then wanted to do God's will their way, which, by the way, was what Saul did. So the next part of the story, we'll go to the lower story here. And as we go to the lower story, we pick up towards the end of Samuel's life. Samuel's getting older and there's no succession plan in place. He's the last of the kings and people are nervous about this because there's no kind of apparent plan to to succeed him. And people are going, who's going to protect us? Who's going to teach us when Samuel is gone? And so what do they do? They ask Samuel to appoint a king. Basically, they say, you know, we aren't sure what God's doing here, but we're looking around and what do they say? We'll read it in a moment, but basically they say, we looked around and we saw what every other nation has. They all have kings. We want to be like everybody else. And every parent knows how that goes, right? You promise your children good and safe and healthy things. And what do they say? No, we want what the other kids all have, right? Right? So let's go to the upper story real quick here. And this is just a quick upper story reminder. Because the reason they were asking for a king was why? Was because they forgot this upper story truth that we keep going back to again and again and again. God is always at work and he's always involved. They, they had forgotten that God had always come through for them. He always had the right leader for them at the right time. They forgot what he'd done for the people and their family who had gone, gone before them. And so what do they do? God, we want to follow you, but we want to follow you in a way that we control. And so they demand a king to lead them and to, in, replace of, in replacement of a judge. And if we go back to the lower story, 
In the lower story, what really happened is Samuel said, you really don't want that. And he warns them that a king will be bad for them. He says, God is your king. He, he, wants, he doesn't want anyone to be in between. He wants to be in relationship with you. You don't need kings. You don't need priests to really stand in between you. I want to teach you how to get closer and closer to me. But they refuse. They want a king that they can see. They want a, they want a, a king that, that looks like their expectations. They said, like all the other nations. Look at page 136 in your books. Page 136 here. And I'll... Turn to it as well. It says, but the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then, you catch this, parents? We'll be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. Like the king is going to fight their battles. No, he's going to have what? Their kids fight the battles. Their husbands, their them fight the battles. And this is so hard because Samuel was their spiritual leader. And he gave his life, all of his life, to help them learn how to hear God's voice and to learn to listen. But you notice what happens. They hadn't learned how to hear God's voice. And so what did they do? They went running to another source, just like Eli did when he was little. We want to be like all the other nations. Fast forward. So Samuel appoints Saul. And from all outward appearance, he's the perfect specimen. He's tall, he's strong, he's good looking. But we find out later, even though he looks good on the outside, he's a mess on the inside. He's insecure, he's jealous, he has a temper. And, and if you read the story, you wonder, why did God allow him to be pointed, appointed as a leader? In fact, why did God say he would be the leader? Well, again, we're reminded of this thread. We've been repeating it. God doesn't call perfect people what? He invites imperfect people to learn to trust him so that he can grow them. And that's how, when you read it this week, it starts. Samuel tells Saul, you're going to be appointed king, and he sends Saul on a journey under God's direction. You're going to go on this journey, and along the way, you're going to have God encounters. And Saul does just that. He has these kind of God encounters. And what was the purpose of that? To teach Saul that he could, if he learned to trust God and learned to listen for his voice, God would direct him. And Saul had these encounters, but Saul goes, oh, I'm not sure it's good enough. And when it came time to appoint him as king, he gives in to his insecurity, and he's hiding in the luggage. Now watch, watch what's, what's happening here because Saul would begin his kingship more concerned and scared of what other people would think of him than he was concerned about developing a lifestyle of listening. And it was based on all of God's people saying, we're scared of what other nations are going to think of us than developing a lifestyle of listening. So I want to put these three principles back on the screen. Recognizing God's voice is something we learn. Learn to go to God first, and when God gives direction, obey him even when it's difficult. Notice the contrast between Samuel and God's people when they cry out for a king, between Samuel and Saul. And as we go forward, we'll look at these when it comes to David and other kings. Samuel learned at a very young age to recognize God's voice, that it was something he could learn. But for God's people and for Saul, instead of learning to listen, the people chose what they thought was best. In other words, God isn't speaking the way or in the timing we want him to. And so we're going to do what we think is best and ask God to bless it. And that never is, is a good recipe. It's always a recipe for disaster. Second, learn to go to God first. Instead of going to God first, they went to examples from other nations around them. And as we fast forward and as you read into Saul's life, instead of going to God's fir God first, Sam Saul will at times go, all right, I, I know this, is, I'm pretty sure this is what God's going to do. And so he chose what he thought God would say. And when God gives direction, obey him when it's difficult. Instead of doing what was what God had directed, it was too difficult. It was too different from the other nations. They wanted to do God's will their way. And as you read Saul's journey this week, you'll find that Saul would increasingly say, I want to do God's will my way. And the more you say, I want to do God's will my way, 
you, the more you drift and eventually you say, I want to do my will, my way. And that's the pattern that Saul would begin to live out. Almost to the very end of our chapter, Saul calls all of Israel together because they're under attack by an enemy. And they, he's, he knows he should wait for God for direction because the enemy is much bigger, much stronger than all of them. And so Samuel says, Samuel sends a message, I'm coming, and Saul waits. But Samuel takes longer than Saul thought. And the people started saying, we think you should take charge instead of learning to listen to God. And so Saul takes matters into his own hands. And when Samuel comes, he calls him on the carpet. Look at right in the middle of page 142. Samuel calls him on the carpet and Saul replied, When I saw the men were scattering and that you did not come at the set time and that the Philistines were accept assembling at Michmash, I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So, catch this. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. The words there literally mean, I made the choice to not have a choice. I made the choice to not have a choice. He may, and in that, he made a choice that he began to repeat. I, I'm going to try and do God's will, but I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do God's will, but I'm going to do it my way. And it begins this pattern of drifting. And something actually that we're going to talk about more in depth on the podcast this week. Of the less you learn to listen for God's voice, the less you miss his voice. And the less you seek his voice, the less you'll feel the need to seek his voice and eventually you'll drift away from him. And as you read Saul's story this week, the choice to not live a life of learning to hear God's voice led him further and further, just gradually away from God until you read a, his life ended tragically and basically in a suicide on the side of, side of a hill. So as we continue to reading this story, we're going to find this repeated principle of learning to listen to God's voice, learning to hear God's voice. And it's something we need to learn ourselves. It's something we need to discover for ourselves. Because it's still true for you. You can still learn to hear God's voice. And we all struggle with it. In fact, I'll guarantee you, you've struggled with it if you've chosen to really want to hear his voice. And here's where we want to land in my story. You can choose, like Saul, to be a God follower in name. You know, I go to church, I hang around church. Or you can choose to be a God follower for real. You can really follow and you can say, I'm choosing to live my life following his voice and cultivate a lifestyle of learning his voice. And I want to just leave us with three challenges. I'm going to take the three principles. I'm going to reword them a, a little bit of how to hear God speak. And we're going to unpack this a little bit more in depth on the podcast this week. Here's the first, first challenge. Choose today to cultivate a lifestyle of learning. We actually talked about this a couple of weeks ago and we talked about uh, jo Joshua and the conquering of Jericho. Spend more time with God than makes sense and reduce the noise where the primary noise of your life points, God, points your life back to God. That's how you cultivate a lifestyle. Second thing, start every day asking what Eli told Samuel to pray. Speak, Lord. I want to learn to listen. God, Speak to me. I want to learn to listen. And I guarantee you, you pray that prayer every day. He will begin to teach you. And finally, if you're going to make a mistake obeying God, make it trying to obey him instead of wondering if it is him. There's times in my own life I'm like, God, is that you? I'm not sure it's you. And did I really hear you? Or is that just a thought in my own life? But you know what? I would rather make a mistake 
make a mistake doing something that I think is God, I think might be his voice, than saying, I'm not so sure it's you and I don't do it. I don't know if that makes sense to you. We'll unpack that a little bit more on the podcast this week. But this principle, if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, developing a lifestyle to hear his voice is about learning to live in the promised land. Let me pray for you. Father, I just want to pray one prayer for all of us. All of us. Whether we're seeking you, whether we're learning about you, or whether we're in relationship with you. Speak, Lord. Help us to learn to listen. Help us this week, Jesus. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Have a great week, New Hope. Well, church, we hope that you found today's teaching valuable and that you're encouraged to take a next step. Yes, and as we wrap up today, we want to give a quick shout out to our gatherings. Ooh. Hey, guys, we're glad that you joined us every <laughs> good week. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to be with you. Uh, gatherings are people uh, mm-hmm. who've decided they want to worship in community to yeah. hear the message together in a community. And if you're joining and you aren't with a gathering, you're on your own and you're looking to have people with you uh, as you worship uh, together with us every week, we want to help you with that. We want yeah. to encourage you maybe to start a gathering um, which sounds maybe a little intimidating. Mm-hmm. That could just be you and a couple other people uh, in your living room on your couch uh, who, who worship together and to hear the message together. And we'd set you up with all of the all of the details, everything yep. you need to know. So if you're interested in that or if you just feel like maybe the Lord is uh, tugging on your heart right now and in just a small way, uh, we encourage you to fill out the form that's in the yeah. chat right now. Um, doesn't mean you're signing up for anything really big, but uh, we just want to be able to send you yep. more information. And let us know that too because we'll be praying with you throughout your journey as well. So click the link in the chat right now. Yeah, and uh, we want to encourage you to check out our podcast. It comes out every Monday morning, 6 a.m. If you're one of those early rising people, uh, just you can start your week off with the podcast. Yeah. Doesn't sound great to me. I'm not an early morning person. <laughs> we found but, out this last week that there's a competition for a oh. couple of friends who wakes up earlier to watch the podcast. So there are some of you yes. who join every so, week right So keep away. doing that. Yeah. But if you haven't checked it out, uh, you can check it out anytime throughout mm-hmm. the week. It's on YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify as well. So it's, it's just a, a great time of teaching with Pastor Mike and, yeah. and David's there too. <laughs> uh, but we they love have, you, David. <laughs> Uh, they have a good time, mm-hmm. and uh, Pastor Mike is just a, such a great teacher, so yeah. we encourage you to do that. And with that, we really hope you join us again next week, 9.30 and 11.15, for those of you who join with us mm-hmm. live. We hope you have a great week. We hope you spend time listening to what God has to say to you, and let's go and be the church. Well, hello again, church. Before we jump into Pastor Mike's message, there's just a few things that we want to touch mm-hmm. on. We talk about them almost every week. So this is the part where we remind you, don't check out. Oh, yeah. Because these things are important. Or you maybe you could, <clears throat> but come back at the end. <laughs> 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 well, what if they don't have kids? That's what? more for like my brain was going, but that's not what came out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead and check out. We don't uh, want you to check out. I, I communicated real poorly right there.